talking about entertainment in the 70s and 80s, where I was very active here in, in Japan, we can just leave that to our conversation afterwards. Um, <clears throat> let me begin by saying uh, the path for Japan in the future is not obviously mass production or mass consumption or to continue to pursue economic growth. The aging population, declining birth rate and GDP have long been overtaken by China, recently to Germany and the rest of history, and maybe probably soon to um, India. Um, and looking around Asia, Japan Asian population is pretty severe. Japan is currently 48.6 years old. In comparison, the average age of ASEAN country with a population of 615 million plus is 29.1. I'm not an expert on this field like some of you are here, but it's very clear um, from the perspective of labor productivity and from economic growth viewpoint, it is obvious which country looks attractive from the world investment in 20 years time. So what is the way for Japan to go on, how to go on and to survive? It is and might be the only way, is to create and an export high value added products such as science and technology, and obviously arts and culture. Fortunately, I believe Japan is rich in both. Now, when we focus in art and culture, Japan has accumulated and inherited its culture for over 2000 years. It is almost miraculous, and there are various theories about how this happened. But the fact of the matter I see here is throughout the long history, power and authority have always been separated here in Japan, and they have coexisted. Power has always changed amongst the warlords and political powers, but authority have always been here. The authority being the emperor system and the imperial family of Japan. In other words, Japan's culture has always been preserved and handed down by the imperial family and their advocates. Kyoto is called the city of thousand years, and there is a good reason for that. Its culture continues to live on in their daily lives every day. Being a Tokyo guy, when you arrive in Kyoto, you feel like time flows much slower. And living in Kyoto now, I learn not to ask ignorant questions like, why do people do this and that? Because the answer will be always be the same. We've been doing this for a thousand years. <laughs> As we see, Kyoto is now packed with foreign tourists. And when we talk about tourism, and it is often referred to as cultural tourism. But after all, tourism is coming and experiencing culture. So you cannot deviate culture and tourism. It's often called the tourist industry. But now looking at this trend, it was not if Japanese government had advertised it to the world. As we all know, advertising, communicating, public relations are not Japan's forte. Today's inbound tourism is a phenomenon that is, can only happen in age of internet connecting online, where you can find so much information from all around the world. The other day, there was this business symposium in Kyoto called do not wait until you are discovered. And people from various industry gathered and the government was also involved in discussion where many in ideas have been presented amongst business sectors. I felt it was a great sign that the government and the private sector can work together on this. For example, when we focus in the world of culture, art and entertainment, Japanese entertainment industry has a long history but due to the fact that Japan has developed a huge market during the economic growth in the 70s and the 80s, they focus to domestic consumption and unfortunately, they are not industry, an industry that spreads its wings to the world. That is where the agency of culture affairs is currently focusing. We started so-called the cultural business transformation project 
its abbreviation is CBX, Cultural Business Transformation. This includes music, motion pictures, stage entertainment, art, and world-class Japanese contents like anime, manga, games, and much more. Uh, the idea is to comprehensively develop Japan's content, producing vehicle as an industry, and to disseminate them to the world. This includes traditional performing arts as well. Talking about performing arts, traditional performing arts goes, it's a huge subject. I'm not going to get into that, you know, today. But it's a very, very important task for the Japanese Agency of Culture, Arts and Culture, to tackle. This is a graphic display of the 25 highest gross grossing media franchise of all time. As you see, we can start from, from Walt Disney, who, who has drawn this comic called Mickey Mouse and their friends over 100 years ago, and goes all the way from James Bond to whatever. All the figures you see here, ag aggregated figure on the top, is $432.4 billion. This is the top 25 of this merchandise content in the world. And the red figures, the red, red word, letters is made in Japan. So out of the 25, top 25, 11 of them are Japanese contents. Just this shows the potentiality of Japanese culture product in the world market. But again, this was an effort of this individual private sector successfully challenging to the world market. And very little had to do with the Japanese government, if any. We have evidence that our neighbor, South Korea, has so successfully done in this past 20 years. But I dare say, it is highly possible to accomplish the scheme on a larger scale if Japan make the scheme a national priority. As a first step, we are currently partnering with the private sector to establish an entity called Japan Cultural and Entertainment Industry Promotion Association. Uh, its abbreviation is called SIPA. We, we established that organization uh, last December. And in 2025, this organization will host Music Awards Japan, which can be said to be the Asian version of the Grammy Awards and will be held in Kyoto. We will be seeking for artists to participate not only from Asian countries but also from the Pacific Rim. Motion pictures is also, industry is also a big thing. We do have various film festivals but to be quite honest it's not functioning as one might want it to expect. We would like to involve the movie industry to SEPA so that we can comprehensively work together to seek the international market. Art industry is another big thing. Japan is known to have a large number of galleries amongst the developed nations. But when it comes to the art business transaction, it is nowhere near the major players of the world. Attracting art business is also a major theme of our country. Well, I can go on and on, but if we are willing, if Japan is willing to proclaim that we are, will deviate from the path of, to pursue to be an economical giant, it is imperative to develop our arts and culture, entertainment activities to be one of our key industries. And finally, I'm sure we agree that culture and art enrich people's heart. We experienced this isolation in the, the corona pandemic for, for three, two, three, four years, and we have felt and evidenced that people need to enrich their heart, which enrich their life through arts and culture. And that, was, that is what we're, we, it's all about. Obviously, we need to establish economical foundation to realize that happiness, but it should not be the other way around. To teach our children just to pursue economical success cannot and should not be Japan way to the future. I believe it's time for Japan to change its path. Thank you very much.
Commissioner, thank you very much for this um, opening remarks here. Um, now, let me start with just a couple of questions, mm -hmm. um, and then we open it up, um, you know, for uh, participation from the audience. Um, it's always good to see that, um, you know, Hello Kitty is uh, four times more than Barbie. But, um, you know, you may have your own preferences here. Um, now, um, don't wait to be discovered. Now, you know, Japanese artisans, Japanese culture has always been very inward. Mm. And it was exactly, it is the highest quality, therefore the customers will come, mm -hmm. right? How exactly, I mean, you mentioned, you know, some of the initiatives that you're taking. The world thinks Japan is incredibly cool, right? Mm -hmm. But somehow the Koreans are better at commercializing this coolness. So. What have you learned from the Korean experience? We have learned a lot, okay? Um, about 15 years ago, I used to head the, uh, well, we had this little Japanese Grammy Awards called the Godo Taisho, and it's always held in the New Year's Eve, and it's, it's been going on for, you know, 70 years after the war. And about 15 years ago, there was a uh, promotion of the Chinese so-called, in those days, K-pop, okay? In, in those days, J-pop, was dominating the Asian countries. And so, and these two, uh, five good-looking young men came to my, my backstage uh, door and said, we are the Toho Shinki, okay? This is a legendary name for, from the K-pop, the dawn of the K-pop. And said, we are looking your back. We are trying to reach our arms to reach you, your back. Okay, said, okay, good. Good luck to you guys. <laughs> and now, today, I talk with my, 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 my people in, in the music industry and said, we cannot even see their backs anymore. Okay, this 15 years, they have dominated, uh, literally dominated business-wise as well, because they bought a huge company in, 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 in the United States, a management co company called High. Uh, holdings, a corporation, which owns Justin Bieber, Mariana Grande, and all these, all these franchises all around the world, they bought it. So in a way, they don't need BTS or Blackpink anymore. Mm. And, and they keep on producing, obviously, but um, they dominate not only in the charts, but as far as music business. And there are a history about 15, 20 years since Emil Mbak, mm. the president there, proclaim that he's going to, in his term, he's going to create three major industry, export industry. One is plastic surgery. <laughs> Two is pro golf. So they sent out, you know, youngsters to America and to the Australian school, you know, golfing schools to create pro professional golfers. And now you, the rest is history. You, you see the top money list in the states around the world. Oh, 30 percent of them are Koreans. And number three was entertainment. Right. And they made a success in, in the motion pictures, you know, when they received not the foreign film uh, awards, you know, like some of the Japanese have, have won, um, but the, the Academy Award, right. the best picture yeah. with Parasite. And so, I mean, there's so many tactics that they've used which we can learn and that what we are starting international wise, um, they have Koreans have oh my oh my God you know they don't need any more you know all these key points because they've dominated business now, but they started from Mexico. The reason why is that no matter how big the K-pop was in Asia, they needed to come close to the United States market because that's where the market is dominating. So they just try so hard to make the K-pop number one in the hit chart in Mexico. <laughs> the American producers just said, okay, whatever is happening in, in the Far East, whatever, you know, okay, so what? But when it's starting happening around their surroundings near the United States, they have to pay attention. And that's how they started. In Europe, they started in Italy. Mm and they dominate the British charts. So that's, you know, those, those tactics 
And obviously, it's all funded by the government. Mm -hmm. and that is the one point that we cannot realize here in Japan, because it's a totally different system. No. If that answers your question, I was too long, but... No. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder, wonderful nuances, um, you know. Uh, now, you know, Japan, um, we think of Japan as being a very well organized, um, you know, METI mm -hmm. planning the great economic miracles, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. <laughs> but actually, the fragmentation mm -hmm. is very, very high, as you point out. And as a result of that, Koksaku like really having a national strategy, mm -hmm. building national champions, is very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to ask you a slightly personal question, but you've served under, what now, three prime ministers, <laughs> right? You've served under it's three not, prime ministers. It's not very long, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> but t t t tell us a little bit about, you know, sort of your experiences in terms of, you know, how does the world of Japanese politics well, really, we, everybody recognizes that there are enormous assets, right? Right. Um, everybody recognizes that there's both breadth and depth, mm -hmm. right? But it's being underutilized. So tell us a little bit about how, in the political world, um, you know, the leadership thinks about this. Well, I mean, I think I'm the one, the, the last person you want to ask about politics, because I am I'm very, very, you know, I have, I've been around for long, okay? So I have a lot of friends in, in the political arena, and I call my arena as well, but, um, well, um, can I just show you um, another display here? Just this shows what our cultural activities is limited to, okay? We, we are the, the least, with our GDP num being number three in the world, and our cultural budget is the last of the developed countries. I'm not gonna say, just, just follow this, please. But this is very interesting, isn't it? Korea, number two in this list, okay? The United States. Second from the bottom, okay? This is weird, isn't it? The reason why is that United States cultural budget, 85% comes from public entity, a private sector, mm. because of the tax system, okay? I've been talking with, I mean, even I used to work for JazzRack as a president of JazzRack for, for six years. Um, and, and, and each time we talk about the copyright and the collecting society, and we have a huge, huge organization around the world called CZAC. Mm. And, and this is the gathering of the collecting society around the world. And I always talk with the finance minister, the prime minister, the foreign minister, everybody when I used to talk to, they understand the, 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 the reason why I'm, 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 I'm just stressly just insisting these these issues but it never works that way here in japan mm. and the the biggest reason why is the tax system okay um there are so many entities in in, in the zaikai okay the economic sector that's willing to help mm -hmm. but, but due to this tax system that is tied up, I'm not gonna get into the details, but it's almost impossible unless we change that tax system, mm. the corporate tax system. So, um, I don't know if you have heard the Furusato Noze, okay? An uh, individual uh, citizen is entitled to pay tax in the region they live, okay? But not the corporations. Mm. Okay, if, if that, only that can be realized mm. and the tax de deduction that they get, we can talk about 200 times more mm. the possibility of the figure. I've talked with the K. Dan Ren and I, I've talked with the uh, uh, Kansai Kizarengo people mm. about that. And they're, they're dying to have that huge comp change of the, the system, uh, which would not happen in my term. So 
I don't know if I that <laughs> asked, asked your question, but this itself is a huge, huge um, system that not even the prime minister mm. can realize that in that short term. Mm. Mm. Yes, so. Uh, one final question sort of from my perspective and just to sort of switch, you know, sort of another, I don't know, 95 degrees or something. Like yes. That. Um, you know, there is the traditional culture. Mm -hmm. And Asia Society in New York just did a wonderful exhibition, uh, Meiji Modern, right? Um, you know, sort of showcasing, mm -hmm. you know, sort of the development of Japan and also with a strong focus on the women and female participation, mm -hmm. you know, in the renaissance that Japan experienced, okay. um, you know, uh, during the Meiji period, as you're very, very well aware of. Um, you know, so this mixture of sort of a deep traditional culture, right, and the sort of Pokemon Go funky stuff, mm. a pink lady included. <laughs> um, <Okay. laughs> you know, uh, so, so uh, where, where do you see the challenges of sort of uh, bringing this together? Well, that's, uh, that's one of the big issues that, that we have to consider in this modern era. Um, <clears throat> I think you know this. This, this inbound visitors, tr tourists in Japan. I think they're they're expecting both, mm. right? And um, as we see, the inbound, the government figure. I dare say they're predicting forty million plus in two thousand twenty-five mm -hmm. of Osaka Expo being coming around the corner. And what we're lacking, and this is a very um, important strategy that we have to realize, is that they're obviously expecting this old Japanese 2000 year history, tradition, culture, visiting, whatever it is, okay? But they're not aware of whatever that is, was on the list. Mm -hmm. Where can we meet them? Mm -hmm. China has that. Mm -hmm. We call it the International Media Center. Right. Okay. And the content is, as you see, half of them are Pokemon, mm -hmm. Hello Kitty, et cetera, et cetera. Korea established that International Media Center in Koshu mm -hmm. uh, in 2021. Mm -hmm. And Japan doesn't have that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I've been talking with, with, um, you know, the way to use the Tsukiji area, you know, they're huge, abandoned, you know. It's, it's the old fish the market, old fish right, market right, by place, the Inza. Okay. And it's owned by the Tokyo Metropolitan Government. And I'm trying to talk them into, you know, use that, I mean, the, the last resort, if you like, okay, in, in the Metropolitan Tokyo area, where we have that vast amount of space. <laughs> And um, again, um, it's very hard to realize these kind of thing here in Japan. But, you know, the foreign tourists, uh, answering your question, is expecting both, right? Mm -hmm. And they can go to Kyoto and Nara and they can go to Mount Fuji. Mm -hmm. But they are expecting, the youngsters are expecting a little bit more than that. Mm -hmm. And I think in order to establish Japan as the tourist um, um, destination yeah. from all around the world, yeah. I think this, the after part, is yet to come, and we have to realize that. Right. May, may I ask one final question, you know, on that, mm -hmm. which, you know, the traditional crafts in mm -hmm. Japan, um, they're dying out, mm -hmm. right? Um, there is yes. a man in Kanazawa, I was introduced to you mm -hmm. two weekends ago, who is 92 years old, and he's okay. the last person who, know how to, who knows how to do gold leaf, okay. right, with uh, platinum, mm -hmm. right? And when he passes away, there is nobody who will succeed okay. that tradition. Mm -hmm. There are seven major no schools, mm -hmm. no, the form of the imperial mm -hmm. theater. Um, one of them uh, is about to die out, mm -hmm. right, because they can't get any sponsorship, right? Tell us a little bit about this challenge mm -hmm. of keeping the incredibly rich tapestry of Japanese crafts, right? Whether it's lacquerware, whether it's bunka, whether it is, uh, you know, uh, people who do the, the, the sculptures at the temples and the shrines. How does the, the, the as the commissioner, how do, you, how do you counter that to keep these traditions alive? Okay, again, 
we have um, we have come with a certain budget. First time in Bunkacho's history, last December, it's as a subsidiary budget, exactly to, to advocate this kind of industry. Uh, we have a project called the Tsumugu project, okay? Tsumugu means to weave, um, to, 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 to continue the, the trend or the, the, the line no. of technique, yep. the bloodline of the authentic, for example, the T. Um, recently, I, I met this um, um, the master of the kodo. Do you know what kodo is? It's, we have tea ceremony, we have flower arrangements, but we have also it's the oldest, oldest. Do is means the way of the fragrance. It's been going on for over a thousand years in, from the Heian period. And he said, I'm the last breed. I can't, I, of my thousand some odd years of yeah. history of our family, because they people not interesting anymore. And so this is kind of thing. Bunraku, for example, Bunraku, the head, the National Bunraku Theatre in, in Osaka. Bunraku is the the puppet. The puppet, puppet. Okay. As far as the the, the productivity of, of okay, one tiny puppet huh. is have to be. Manipulated by three actors, okay. As far as the efficiency of economic, <laughs> as far as, and it's a tiny puppet, so you cannot do it that in a huge arena, which which <laughs> accommodate you know ten thousand people. It's usually about four hundred, five hundred maximum is the capacity. And these people, I mean, you know, they need help from the state, right? And so this Tsumugu project, yeah. we're doing this along with the Yomiuri Shimbun um, and a and couple other um, you know, entities that would like to support. And, uh, but going back, um, first time in Bunkachu history, we have established a new budget for just particularly for this, 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 this target, um, this fiscal, starting from April, the next fiscal year. So this is a slight little, little, so you know, one light battle against the Ministry of Finance. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Wow. It was a huge, huge battle. Um, but um, that was a great experience. But, you know, people know the, the importance now yeah. of the Japanese not going to Pokemon and all that. But also, let me just go back two ways, okay? We have to tackle the international strategy and the international market. Number two, we have to look back of our thousand years of heritage. These two are, I think, I, I believe is the conclusion of my speech today, but that's the two ways I have to tackle. A thousand years of history. You are chairing an organization that has, what, shall we call it 75 years of history? Um, Asia society here. But um, please, um, you know, any questions, comments, you know, from the audience. If you could very, very briefly just identify yourself. Glenn. I'm Glenn Fukushima. <clears throat> I'm a uh, founding member of uh, the Japan Center of the Asia Society. We have the pleasure of running into each other in wine shops and comparing um, <clears throat> information about, especially Napa Valley wines. But um, <clears throat> I have a question about the, uh, the tax issue. Over the last 30 or so years, I've been involved in some very modest philanthropic activities in the U.S. and Japan. And in every case in Japan, this issue of tax comes up as the barrier. So I've been hearing about this for the last 30 years. Why doesn't do, someone do anything about it? And the other question, part of the question is, in the last 10 or 15 years, there seems to be a very increased level of concern in Japan that Japan is way behind the world in terms of the art and culture market. And so there seems to be a lot of receptivity, generally speaking, in Japan to having Japan um, change so as to make it easier for individuals, corporations, so forth, to contribute and get tax deductions or be able to contribute using shares of stock as opposed to cash. Um, and I know that some people like uh, Mr. Taro Kono have been active in trying to promote this sort of thing. What, what, is, what would you recommend as a private citizen, <laughs> what you recommend uh, as the best way in order to change the system in Japan in getting the, the media 
and the private sector and the political leaders to change the tax system to make it possible to make significant contributions. Thank you. Glenson, thank you. Um, uh, as I briefly mentioned, this frusato noze, you know, this is only in, uh, is, is, you know, to, so it's to a scheme where your local inhabitants tax, right? Um, you don't pay it to the local authorities, but you buy products and services from whatever region that you want to support. And the regions have different catalogs, right, of services or of goods. You know, and so yes, you get that in exchange. In, 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 exchange in exchange for the tax, yes. right? You get right. the salmon. From but but <laughs> right. right. But you know, the purpose of that is to to uh, let's you know take care of our, our own town, our own village. You know, or, or, or you know, Gebiet. Uh, what is that? In, Gebiet uh, is a very German word. Yes, it is. Uh, <laughs> uh, the region, the area. The, yes. Okay, and and that is only. This 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 tax law is only for individuals, but there the, the 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 law is on the table to 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 make it happen for corporate as well. And, and as as I mentioned, if this happens, you know, there's no worry anymore. I mean, this is going to far exceed France. Well, I think make uh, somebody somebody like Konotaro. <laughs> Be in charge of all that, <laughs> but you know it, it's you know this has to do with this political system that we have. That you know there are so many politicians that have the same idea, and you know when when we talk individually, you know we're, we're in the same wavelength, hmm. but it never happens in the in the political arena. So. But this only applies uh, only applies to inhabitants in Japan, right? So if a non-Japanese a non-Japanese ah. president wants to contribute. This would not apply. Is that oh, correct? That's exactly right. So, yes. I, think, I, think, I think the changes have to be more, more expansive. <laughs> Internationally. Okay. But, I'll keep that in mind. I keep welcome. That. You're making some private recommendations for those of us who would li like to get some changes made in Japan. Mm. Okay. That may... <laughs> you would like to arrange that? <laughs> it, it, it just, just, you know, I mean, Japan is highly concentrated in the urban areas, in Tokyo, Osaka, Fukuoka. Lots of people come here, so to support their regions, right? This is what it was ultimately Prime Minister Abe and Prime Minister Suga who introduced the Furusato Nose, which arguably, at least in my economic analysis, is one of the most successful, you know, redistribution systems, you know, via taxes that exists in the world, right? right? So just, just as, a, as a brief background, please. <clears throat> As you mentioned about the concentration, and again, it may already be happening, forgive me, it's been 10 years since I've been in Japan, but I saw a study of Tokyo versus Amsterdam, whereas Tokyo was more lower, lower uh, dwellings, whereas Amsterdam built up, so the square foot per person mm -hmm. was much larger. Is there a movement in the urban areas to build upward so that people can have a larger square footage so that they actually can have a place to put the art that they buy. <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not an expert in that 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 area. But um, you know, when we talk about this this art dealing, I mean, obviously there are a few people who's an expert in that area. But um, there are there are again. Um, there, are, there are people who are very interested in, in, in buying. The, the, you know, and again, this, this, it all comes to this tax system again. If you, if you buy a wonderful art, which will cost a few million dollars, and if you have to pay property tax to that, you know, they'll hesitate, right? So they, 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 there need to be a distribution system tax-wise as well. So it all comes to tax. <laughs> The reason why I'm asking this is there's a feeder system of young ah, artists. Okay. In other words, there's tiers, there's levels, and they don't start out, as you know well, yeah. as great artists. So in the U.S., there's tiers, there's feeders, there's galleries, so that you can generate this large community of artists because they have a chance mm. to sell their art when they're younger. That's why I'm asking is yeah. do you actually, you know, are the restrictions being removed to build upwards so that there can be more towers 
so that people can have larger square footage. So, sorry, this isn't, this is not <laughs> right. this is my, like your, my expertise. The epic, size, the, 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 the epic size of Tokyo apartments has shrunk from 72 square meters to 70 square meters over the last decade. Oh my God. Um, there is deregulation. You can get a higher yield, right? You can build taller, as you can see around here. They're taking our sky away from everywhere. But it doesn't result in increased, uh, uh, increased plots. Just to give you an idea, 2,000 square feet is what, 200 square meters? Is that about right? 2,000 square feet, last year 157 apartments in Tokyo that had more than 2,000 feet. Wow. So if you're not Jack Ma, you ain't getting it, <laughs> right? Sorry. It's good for the developers, by the way, but that's a different story, right? Please, Terry. Yes. Um, Terry Porte, I'm a global trustee of Asia Society and the co-chair of Asia Society Japan. I also served as the US chair of the US-Japan Conference on Cultural and Educational Interchange, known as CULCON. And that's my question. One of the things that I worked on, and I have to say did not make much success, was finding a way to unlock the great treasures of Japanese art, <laughs> painting, sculpture, screens, which are locked in national museums and temples and shrines and are not seen, uh, not only not seen by an international audience, where there is huge demand, but also a Japanese audience. I recall when the Jakushu went to the National Gallery exhibition in Washington, plane loads of Japanese went to Washington so that they could see it. And so my question is, has there been any progress in finding a way to make all of these great artworks more accessible, which I think, and I salute you for the program that you have been designing, would also help the export of Japanese uh, art and also the import of Japanese, of tourists to Japan. Um, <clears throat> there's two, I think, issues there. Uh, one is, um, if you're talking about our old traditional uh, treasures, Japanese treasure, heritage, yep. Um, there's often asked, and, and I didn't even know until I became the commissioner, that um, why are not, there is this um, Josetsu Tenji, uh, what do you call that? In, 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 um, uh, um, permanent display, like all these, you know, rules and, and Metropolitan Museum have here. Uh, but as far as the Japanese crafts, thousand years old paintings, thousand year old choreography, they cannot endure that long permanent display. And that's the lesson I, first lesson I learned when I visited the National Museum. So um, it has to be, you know, altered every two months. Well, they cannot maintain and it'll just, you know, the swords will be rusted all that, they, ha they need maintenance with this high humid climate that we have here. As number two is, is the interest of going into the international art market. I don't know if that was one of your question or not, but this is what I just, in my brief um, uh, lecture, I, I mentioned is that we are so behind of this international transaction of arts that 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 you know that I think is not helping the young prominent artists here in Japan to expand it to, to the international market and this is something that we uh, are trying very hard uh, we cannot you know you invite uh, Art Basel for example the biggest art fair uh, in the world to to Japan but there are lots of art fairs here where they're, they're going to, you know, start transaction of Japanese young, young artists' mm. works. And that will sort of, you know, bottom up the whole possibility of the young, talented artists, Japan and around. Thanks for a terrific presentation. Uh, I'm Danny Russell with the Asia Society Policy Institute in New York. First of all, I have to register on behalf of my three children a protest that Doraemon did not seem to appear on your list ah. of major global... <laughs> uh, I think there was. 
I, Doraemon. I saw you didn't see it. I didn't oh, see Doraemon. I got to double check that. <laughs> um, secondly, um, you've talked about entertainment. You've talked about art. Um, and Jesper mentioned uh, Japanese crafts and design and so on. I think broadening uh, the aperture a little bit when you talk about the international vector of appeal, what, what, what brought you to Japan, it's a much longer list. In my personal case, what got me into Japan, literally and figuratively, were martial arts. Okay. That's a very different kind of art. Mm -hmm. um, I found years ago working in New York that it was food, sushi, ramen, you name it, that uh, generated a huge appeal and attraction to Japan. And now uh, liquor, mm -hmm. uh, not just oh, yeah. sake, but whiskey, <clears throat> suntory time. Yes. Right. Um, and so I, I just want to put on the table and get your, uh, your sense. Sports probably goes into that category. Mm -hmm. How broad is your sort of definition of the kind of culture that serves as a magnet for Japan? Very, very uh, interesting question. Um, uh, obviously, um, sport is sports. There's a sports show. Right. The Olympian, Murofushi, is the head, <laughs> working hard. Um, but um, yes, um, but you know, before Washoku became a bunkacho issue, okay, that happened only after UNESCO designated <laughs> Washoku as a world treasure. Okay, before that, that Washoku belonged to uh, Nori and Suisansho, okay, the agricultural ministry, okay. But once it became a national heritage, uh, you know, it shifted to Bunkacho. So Bunkacho, vast, vast. We know when Bunkacho started in 1968. I, I mean, it, it was there before the war, but after uh, this, uh, what we, the household, if you like, okay, um, was established in the modern time was 1968. So it's not that old, mm. but they only had five. Um, division there at that time in 1968. Now we have 13, and um, we have so uh, how many times? Three times, four, you know, four times, fourfold. And um, the people that work has only doubled. So I mean, there's so many. We have 700 official bunkacho employees have to cover so many fields. And 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 like when you said, you know, there's few attraction for the foreign tourists here. One is to see heritage, you know, history, all that. And then uh, comes to um, obviously food. And the number one in the list of 1923, I just received it a few months ago, a few weeks ago, was ramen. Mm. Okay. All the foreigners think ramen is washoku. Okay, what well, it is, to be quite honest. <laughs> you cannot get ramen in China, the ramen that we eat here. But in a way, you know, we have to sort of um, make it, take it in, in prospect and, and, and just to, what is our tourist attraction that we have to, for example, you know, um, as far as the Minister of Tourism have um, announced, uh, you know, this is again late last year, 30% um, of the inbound tourism is a repeat, okay? Japanese culture is so, so deep and diverse that one or two visits cannot you know, they cannot, <laughs> they want to be a little bit more here and they need to, um, so what do we provide to these people who want more of the Japanese culture? So, you know, I don't know if I have asked your question, uh, but um, there's so many issues that we have to talk about tourism, but we do have Ministry of Tourism and we have Agency of Tourism as well and Bunkacho, and so we have that 
you know, triangle situation that we're, we are working on is pretty, working pretty, pretty well. And um, we're, you know, tackling all these issues. It's great to have uh, you, Mr. Uh, Tokura. My last question, wait, my question, I'm a Vice President of Arts and Culture at Asia Society here. So I think the crisis of uh, Japanese art and culture outside of Japan is that there's not much people from Japan working in arts and culture outside of Japan. I look around, curators, museum directors, university scholars, Japanese nationals, they're almost non-existing mm. currently. So I know Bunkacho has been investing money to grow young talents, mm. whether it's in visual art or art history. So can you tell us a little bit about your investment in people, the people to come? Okay. Um, oh my gosh, this is um, a huge issue, and, and one of the things that um, that we successfully established uh, in this next fiscal year is that it's a multi-year term budget, which never existed in Bugacha either. Mm -hmm. So once you want to sponsor a musician to go to Vienna, it was only one year, and that was it. They had to come back. Nomura Mansai, the famous Kyogen guy, mm. he was in London in, in the 90s when I was there, and he was a youngster. It was only, but he wanted to study the Japanese, uh, the, the, the British uh, performing arts mm. there. Mm -hmm. But what can a guy do with 12 months? Mm. Okay. Now we can extend that from this new fiscal year for three to three years' time. Okay. That is just the minimal effort that the Japanese can do. But again, <clears throat> it's the both ways that we have to consider the, this, this trend of lacking the Japanese. Um, it's not only the state um, policy that, that, that occurs of this, this lacking of the Japanese individuals wanting to live or study or work abroad. It's the, the mentality of the youngsters now mm. that even the Gaim Show guys are foreign, complaining, foreign minister. foreign minister guys, are complaining that, you know, they rather stay in Japan. <laughs> I mean, they, obviously, they would like to, you know, go and, and find a post somewhere in the future, but they would rather stay at home with the family and their parents or whatever. So, I mean, this is a strange mentality, you know, that our generation don't understand. And that has very little, well, maybe a little to do with the, the, the government strategy as well, the policy as well. But it's more, I believe, is the mentality of the young Japanese that doesn't want to go abroad to expand the horizon that, you know, in our generation, we cannot understand that. Yes, thank you. My name is Casey Kung. I'm global trustee based in Hong Kong. Well, first of all, congratulate you and Japan for having achieved such great soft power through culture. Uh, my question really has to do with um, your view or the general Japanese view on foreign participation in Japanese culture. So I can think of examples like walking through Kyoto, you see a lot of foreigners, Asian, Western, dressed in kimono, walking around to um, a friend of mine who just bought a Japanese sake producer mm. and a Japanese traditional Japanese inn next door. Mm. And they're Chinese, like me. Mm. Or uh, if you go to sumo, they're the, the most famous uh, wrestlers today may be Mongolian. So what's the view in Japan about foreign participation and you know, appreciation of Japanese culture? Mm. Thank you. <clears throat> Again, um, the internationalization of the Japanese whatever it is, sports, culture, business, whatever. I mean, it is going to happen. It, it will happen. And, and, and it's always the, 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 the factor, fact is the necessity. You talked about sumo, okay? Why the Mongolians are dominating the Japanese sumo? Of course, it's a harsh, it's a very, very tough job. And in and, 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 and the old days, um, you know, most of the sumo wrestlers were from you know, the farmer's second, third son who was big enough and the parents could not afford to feed 
their appetite, whatever. So why don't we send it out to the sumo stable so we, we can eat as much as you want? That's how it really, I mean, this, this was the hierarchy of the sumo world in, 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 in the old days. Um, again, I mean, the necessity and, and the probability and, and the possibility of, this, of any kind of success is always intertwined. And, 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 and Japan, I think, uh, answering the question is in the verge of, of how are we going to do this? Okay, because we know that we lack the new blood in any field, okay? The Asian population, for example. Uh, talking about the traditional craftsmanship, okay? Okay, there are certain ways that the Japanese have just, just you know, um, continued to, 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 to hand down the, the technology, <clears throat> the ideas, the spirit. Um, for example, kabuki, for example. Um, the biggest problem in the kabuki world is that they don't, they're liking boys, okay? <laughs> The, all that wonderful names like Naritaya or Teradaya, well, well, all these wonderful kabuki names, I mean, so they adapt from their relative son, whatever. Mm -hmm. So these kind of things has its limit. And the national th theater that now we just go, we're going to rebuild has, an, has a little training. And we, recruit, there's kabuki, there's kyogen, and there is this Japanese instrument, and there's this training school mm. within the National Theater. And all these kabuki people come and teach these new youngsters. Um, they're 16, 18 years old, mm. and they start learning kabuki. And when we compare that, you know, one who started Kabuki 18 years old and one who is the grandson of the famous, famous Kabuki actor who's been looking at his grandfather since he was three years old, this makes a huge difference, okay? I mean, this, this is very hard to explain, but this is tradition, but we have to overcome that because there are certain ways, especially in the craftsmanship, we need new the the guy who was you know 90 some years old who knows that this is going to end his his heritage his family heritage is going to stop there and we have to think about something to do with that yeah. and again our uh, bunkacho is 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 having this tsumugu weaving project the main objective is to 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 fund these the the, the all these fields for example, you know, we, we, everybody said we, we're lacking this tatami mm. craftsman, okay? But before that, we found out tatami is made out of a straw called igusa, okay? It has to be made by farmers. But it's the, the, the I mean, the lack of, you know, igusa, and then the, the next generation of this farmer doesn't, is rather go, wants to um, uh, grow cherries <laughs> because it's more efficient. Okay, so when we lack igusa, there is no big tatami, even though we have craftsmen. So, I mean, these things have to, you know, there's a huge, huge issue and there's a huge cycle and we have to put in some foreign blood or something different in the cycle or else we have so many fields that might disappear. But the, these ecosystems, right, around the different crafts, like for lacquerware, right? Um, lacquerware is dying out. Not, I mean, there is a shortage of, of new craftsmen. Of course. But, but there's nobody to grow the trees. This earthquake in, in, in Noto was it's not terrible. helping at all. It's I mean, this is a huge, huge disaster for Wajima Nuri, which is a huge old lacquer yeah. craftsman, because they have been. Um, they have this little kame. Uh, yep. What is that? A kame in, in English. Um, um, kame, kame, out. kame. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a barrel, okay, whatever. Uh, is, uh, they, they have been preserving this lacquer for 400 years there. And they've been adding all these new lacquers, whatever, the fluid into it, and makes that, that particular color because it's mixed with all this old color. 
and all that has disappeared. That has, it's gone now. It's, it's a big, big issue for Bunkacho. How are we going to help these people around that area? It's not only Wajimanuri, but all these craftsmen that, that, that lost all this heritage. Uh, and it's an interesting break. problem, right? You could try it with the Rhode Island School of Design, with the Roski School at USC, you know, to get like this. There's plenty of global, you know, artisans or craftsmen or artists who love the Japanese traditions and want to learn, right? But if you go to a Japanese traditional artisan, if you don't have the right letter of introduction from the right person delivered in the right season at the right hour under full moon, I'm exaggerating, right? <laughs> but the form of introduction, it's not you just send an email, right? You need the right introduction. And then you sign up to a program that basically ties you up for 10 years. Remember the sushi dream, somebody, Jiro dreams of sushi, right? Where the brother was happy that he was, after 60 years, allowed to make the egg. Right. And um, so, you know, and, and I mean, if you're if, if you're a global artisan, you know, yes, I want to learn mm -hmm. the Japanese art of lacquerware. Right. But I've got nine months, maybe a year. Right. And then and so adapt. And it's <laughs> really? the beauty of Japan that they are so tough. It's the beauty. And that's, you know, the lineage. Right. It's an incredibly tough culture that molds you and forms you like a bonsai. Right, not like a free spirit artist, right? So to get molded there requires mm -hmm. maybe a couple of years, but adapting that to maybe maybe it's not five years before you get to do the, you know, the 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 tamagomaki. You know, maybe maybe after six months you can try a tamagomaki. Right? So <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Commissioner, we could go on for a long time. Thank you very, very much. Um, you know, it is always amazing. Um, you know, Japan obviously faces a lot of challenges, but at the same time, we also have to recognize that Japan has uh, given birth, despite, despite of all of the constraints, to some of the most amazing global, um, you know, uh, places to experience art. I just named Naoshima yeah. as one of them. Uh, you look at Team Lab as another one. You know, this is still an incredibly creative place. Mm -hmm. And it's good to see mm -hmm. that you are wrestling a little <laughs> bit of yen, you know, from the Ministry of Finance. And, uh, you know, if there's anything that the Asia Society can do um, to Please. help your efforts, I think we would love to host you in New York. But yes. also, yeah, just, just one um, to c conclude this whole, whole uh, wonderful discussion today. Um, we are, I put this called FBI, okay? <laughs> <laughs> FBI meaning from, made it from Japan. And B is made by Japanese. And obviously I is made in Japan, okay? And the most important thing for me and for all these conversations that we have done is from, okay? Made by Japanese is like I used to you know, compose musical operas in London. You know, I was the only Japanese in the whole project, so that was made by Japanese. But, you know, we have to help all these individuals that is working and trying to make their ends meet all around the world, from, from, from musicians to yeah. craftsmen to painters, whatever. But more importantly for our agency is that from Japan is that we should invite mm. and involve mm. the talents from all around the world to Japan mm. and make a creative, whatever it is, a product from Japan to export, yeah. okay? Because Japanese intends to, to, to make and, 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 and conclude everything within, with, by Japanese, okay? Right. That is a huge thing that we've been doing for so long. But now it's time to open up our market, our minds, the ways that we do things, and make a multinational venture, either it's craftsmanship or musical theaters or whatever, sumo, for example, okay? And made from and export that from Japan. So that is our priority. Thank you. Great, thank you very much. Thank you.